Hey, welcome back to Crooked Nature. Hey, everybody. Have a storm moving into my area. Real quick. Lightning and rain. Moved in pretty quick, too. The camera's not doing it quite as much justice. It's actually darker than my camera is... Uh, showing. It's raining quite a bit. Got some thunder, lightning. I'm gonna make some uh, weird sister soup here in just a minute and try to film that for you guys, or at least parts of it. It's kind of interesting. It's just got some different vegetables in it. Sorry for the shaky camera. I'm just outside listening to this rain come in. I spotted a turtle down there earlier. I bet he's uh, in shelter now. All right, I'm going to head inside and start my soup. Hey, everybody, I'm back inside. I'm getting ready to make my weird sister soup. It's got some very interesting vegetables in here. I've got purple cabbage. I've got some... Uh, green summer squash, a zucchini, zucchini. I've got leeks, I've got orange cauliflower, elephant garlic, red onion, and an entire portobello mushroom cap sliced up uh, into thick slices. And that's, I think that's everything that's going in. Oh, oh, and I'm gonna add in about five baby peeled carrots and that's it. If I could get my hands on yellow carrots or other any other color than orange, I would probably be using them because uh, carrots still are something that's actually on my food sensitivity list, but it's very low. So I'm willing to use a little bit of it to add flavor to the soup and add a little bit of fiber to my diet because fiber is important as are the nutrition that comes from carrots, even if it causes intestinal inflammation. It's, it just sucks. It's a big old circle. So this is what I'm getting ready to do. I'm going to put all of those vegetables, all of that, into a big stock pot. Uh, cover it with water, probably two inches above the vegetables. I'm going to, I'm going to fill the pot with water to about two inches above the vegetables. Then I'm going to let it cook for about an hour. Then I'm going to add chicken stock, uh, uh paste, a chicken stock paste, uh, that is, like, like, just like bouillon cubes, but it's a paste instead of cubes. That's all it is. I like it better. I do think it has a better flavor, but I'm also a big fan of the bouillon cubes too. So no big deal either way. And I'm going to possibly add chicken to it, but I'm not sure if I want to do that yet or not. I'm not sure if I need that extra protein. Um, I could probably use it. <laughs> so I think I will add some chicken to it. And I'm going to cheat. I'm going to use just use a can of white meat chicken that's uh and that's and that's what i'm going to do i'm going to use a can of chicken instead of having to cook it because this is just a meal for me my family will not eat all of these vegetables <laughs> not even a small chance my son might he might think this is a really good soup because he's he's like me and he's like yeah weird vegetables let's eat that uh but the rest of my family might not enjoy it which is really just my daughter and fiance so <laughs> that's not too big of a deal but i will make them something else for dinner and this will be for me and my son and i'm probably going to get a frozen loaf of bread out the kind that you have to thaw, let rise, and then bake. And I'm going to do that for dinner as well because it's still only like, it's not even 11 o'clock in the morning right now. So I've got plenty of time to do that. All right, I'm going to stop this so I can show you what it looks like with this in the pot with the water over it. Here we are back again. This is what it looks like when the uh, pot is filled with vegetables and water. I assure you there is about two inches of water above the vegetables. You just have to hold them down because some of them float. This is a pretty good size stock pot. This is my hand here. Um, it's not the, it is actually probably one of the smallest stock pots there is, but this is going to be a great size and this is going to get me through an entire week. And also this is not a soup that you have to just make and eat. You could freeze this and frozen soup stays good in your freezer for quite a while. And it's so easy to thaw it. You just Fill up a gallon bag, freeze it in your freezer, okay? Or half a gallon bag, whatever you're doing. Freeze it in your freezer, and then when you want to use it, you take it out, you put it in a pot of hot water, 
and you just sit it and you let it thaw out. And whenever you come back, it's going to be all liquid and you dump the water out of that pot and then you dump the soup into the pot and you heat the, heat the soup up. It's really easy to do. Um, makes great dinners, especially if you're not feeling good or you don't want to cook. You just, well, for whatever reason, it's something that you can, you can do for that. Frozen soup is a good thing for that. And you can use any kind of vegetables you want. You don't even have to really use vegetables. You know, you could just make a plain soup with chicken and noodles. Soup is really good for you. Most people are so underhydrated and that includes your intestines. <laughs> I know this firsthand. You need lots and lots of fluids just to be healthy. All right, you guys, I'm going to cook this up. It's going to cook all day. I hope you have a great day. This is probably going to be a funky purpley brown color. <laughs> but I'm going to eat it and it's going to be delicious. Thank you guys so much for watching my videos. You have a great day. Hey, back again. want to show you the soup as it's cooking. It's doing a fantastic job. It's cooking, it's cooking. And it's purple. Oh, it's so purpley purple. It's fantastic. I'm loving it. My weird sister soup. Oh, it's so cool looking. The color may change a little bit more as it cooks. I'm going to add, I think I'm going to go ahead and add my chicken stock, my chicken uh, bouillon granules here in just a minute. And that's going to change its color. You can see there's the cabbage. There's the culprit of the majority of that color. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I uh, wasn't paying attention and I didn't chop my onion up before I tossed it in there. So I'm going to have to like pull this out and carefully chunk it up here in just a minute. <laughs> but it's crazy because its color is almost completely gone. But at the same time, it's been dyed a purple. Uh, but the original red color of that onion isn't what it was before. It's pretty interesting how food will leach. The color will leach into the water and stuff like that, making a natural dye. I think that is pretty awesome. I'll see you guys for the next update. Here we are back again at the very end of my journey. I've added all of my seasonings. I've added my chicken. I did not end up putting carrots in this. I did take out the giant onion and cut it up into small pieces. Uh, I checked my broth just a minute ago to make sure it was tasty enough and it is delectable. It's just absolutely wonderful. I don't know if anybody's actually gonna use what I, I've talked about today with alternative diets because sometimes you just you can't have the normal stuff and you gotta work around that with other things like giant pieces of mushroom <laughs> and leeks and cabbage that's not green it's purple orange cauliflower you know strange strange things um i'm really hoping to be able to figure something out for my tomato allergy because that seems to bother my stomach the most of everything i've eaten but it is the highest uh it is the highest number on my sense food sensitivity list so <laughs> other than banana and i just i can't have banana at all um so i'm hoping that Yellow tomatoes uh, might actually be something that I can really work with. And if so, I might be needing to learn how to can and make more things that, you know, I can, I can have in store for myself and my family. Because it, finding things that are made with uh, only one variety of tomato and not being a red tomato is really hard. I do know a few people who might be willing to make me some vegetable juices or at least help me get the the correct types of or off types of produce so that I can make my own vegetable juices and I might have someone who who might consider making me some uh, yellow or orange or pink tomato variety salsas and sauces and that would be really, really cool. I'm excited about this. Um, so technically, this sip is is this sip. This soup, <laughs> this sip, this soup is already ready to eat. But I am gonna go ahead and let it cook for another. It's gonna cook for another hour altogether. 
another 20 minutes right now and then another 40 minutes all together before I consider it to be fully done. It is not quite on low, but it's pretty close to low. So it's, it's just simmering with the lid on. Not too big of a deal. I hope you guys uh, were helped by this and you have a great day. And I really appreciate you watching my videos, even if it's just about boring stuff like diet and soup. Thank you so much.